Try Collective. I hope you're well. I hope you're keeping well. Um, always a pleasure, always a privilege, always an honor to be in your screens uh, sharing with you God's word. I'm excited to share God's devotion. Um, I think my nerves are less, are more calm. Sorry, my loves are more calm this this uh, week uh, when I'm sharing this God's word, and I'm excited because it's something that uh, came to me while while listening to a song, and I was like, wait, this is a good devotion to speak to God's people about. I hope you're well. Um, you keep it well. My name is Miruka Guada. Uh, one of the pastors of Collective Worship, and I'm excited and honored to be on your screens, sharing God's word. Um, this week I have a title that I know, my title, and the title of my sermon is, uh, or devotion, not sermon, my devotion is the Midnight Song, it could be a sermon also. But the title of my devotion this um, uh, day is the Midnight Song. And I've based my scripture, um, my sermon or devotion, on this scripture for Acts chapter 16, verse 25. I'll read it before I start uh, the whole gist so just bear with me uh, go to acts chapter 16 verse 25 uh, from the kjv it says and at midnight paul and silas prayed and they sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them i'll read it again acts chapter 16 verse 25 it says and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them Reading through the scripture, why it spoke to me is because, okay, let's see. Praise has praise produces miracles. What's the, what's the meaning of praise? What's, why do people sing songs of praises? And why are you singing praise um, while you're being persecuted? I found it interesting. A while back, uh, I did uh, a diet. I did a diet plan. Um, those, those strict vegetables and fruit uh, diet plans. And when I was doing it, I literally felt persecuted. I was doing it as a challenge um, with my sisters and my siblings. And they were like, let's try this. It was a 10 day, I think, or 10 day or a 12 day strict vegetable and, and um, fruit diet. And I was, okay, let's try this. But as the days continued, I felt this was the harshest persecution I've ever been in. And I couldn't imagine what other people deal with if this is what they live if persecution i know it's a wrong analogy to compare people in jail but i felt like i was literally in jail while i was doing this vegetable and and fruit uh, diet and i caught myself of so what's my attitude if this is my attitude on a strict vegetable diet what would it be what would be my attitude if i was put in jail uh, my favorite movie in the whole world is the Shawshank redemption this is a recommendation. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. I think it's a PG-13 or PG-16. And the collective has over 16, I hope. So please watch it. Um, it's an interesting and amazing movie of a person who was persecuted. And it shows the analogy of how they reacted being in persecution. But aside from that, let's look at how Paul and Silas reacted or acted while being, in, while being persecuted while being in jail. So a brief history as to why they got into jail is that they had traveled to Macedonia and while in Macedonia they met a lady who, for lack of better words, was a witch or rather a fortune teller, could speak of people's future. But this lady was not doing it at her own accord. She, one, was possessed, but aside from that she was being controlled by men, men who used to profit by her speaking or fortune telling people's lives. And so when this lady approached uh, Paul and Silas and was speaking loudly to them while in Macedonia, Paul and Silas cast out the demon uh, or the spirit in her that was making her uh, uh, speak uh, or cast fortune to people. And the people, the masters of this lady, were pissed off. And so they riled, they riled up the crowd and they flogged Paul and Silas and Paul and Silas were put in jail. And this is where we find Paul and Silas while in jail. Uh, that at midnight, while Paul and Silas were in jail, they prayed, sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. So reading this scripture, I was like, okay, so wait, what's, what's the gist of this? What's this praise God? What's this um, praying and singing songs of praises to God? And I researched or read, so what's singing praise? Well, 
because praise is a word that's passed around. Praise God. Uh, it's, it's a word that we sing and we say a lot to people. So praise is the acknowledging of who God is. Praise is blessing God. And I was like, wait, how do you bless God? How do you acknowledge who God is? So blessing God is acknowledgement and the recognition of God's great richness. It's the acknowledgement and recognition of God's great strength. It's the recognition of God's gracious bounty and gracious love to us. And so reading through this, I felt that uh, what, what does other scripture say? Is, what, what do other scriptures say or mention or highlight when people sang praises to God? Are there many parts in the Bible that speaks of people who sang praises to God? But the other pastor even says that heaven and earth sang praises to God. And I found it interesting that it's not only humans that are singing praises to God. Actual heavens and earth. If you're speaking of heavens and earth, it means that also animals sing praises to God. If you're speaking of heavens and earth sing praises to God, angels are also singing praises to God. So it's a very wide thing that many people sing and maybe people speak praises to God. But what's interesting is how do they do it? So reading this, we see that they sung. And other, other than it being a space of singing, that it can be heard because it says that the prisoners heard them sing praises to God. So it means that singing praises to God is something that can be, it's something that you say out, but aside from you saying it out, it's something that people hear. Reflecting on this, clearly, when we say that I am singing praises to God, I'm not murmuring words, I'm not hushing or keeping it silent. I am actually speaking out words. So we sing praises to God because he, we recognize that he is all-powerful. We recognize that he has so much strength and so much love for us that he's able to give unto us. But aside from that, we sing praises to God by way of saying something, by way of speaking something. That's how we sing praises to God. Reading through the scripture, there are lots that happens after the, the singing praises to God. But what immediately comes before they sang praises to God for Paul and Silas, we, are, we see that they prayed. So, before they sang praises to God, they prayed. When they prayed, they knew whatever that they've said to God, whatever that they've shared or spoken to God in their prayer, they knew it has come. It has come to pass. We don't know until later what happens or what they prayed for, but we know for sure is that they spoke it out knowing that it has happened. But immediately after that, they sang praises to God. They knew that this time, being midnight, they will have a song that they will sing to God. And this midnight song, they knew as they sing it, as they speak it out, there was something that was going to happen. There's a popular TikTok song that I heard and I decided to, to listen clearly at the lyrics. Um, I didn't research more on what it says. So the lyrics of this TikTok song says that even if you're not ready for the day, it cannot always be night. When I heard this, this, this lyric, I was like, wait, what's, what's, what's the vibe for this lyric? So when I researched it, I realized that it's a Kanye West song. And the title of the song is actually Praise God. And what this part says, other than the scripture, this part says, if, and if, if, even if you're not ready for the day, it cannot, it cannot always be night. Speaks also with what scripture says. Now these guys, Paul and Silas knew that it's midnight literally in where they were at the time of the day but also midnight in their situation they are stuck in prison but they still said we will praise god this will praise god despite the situation and the time that we are at and the exciting part is that this act of praising god came with results this space that they were at in prison after they prayed and praised God, despite it being midnight, they knew that this act that they are doing, there's something powerful that comes with it. The result of them praising God was profound. One, it could be heard by prisoners. If you read in scripture, 
they were at the bottom of the bottom of chambers like imagine a basement parking being on the fifth floor if you've been to nakumat lifestyle before um there was like a fifth or a third or a fourth underground uh, parking imagine being down there and people at the top floor could hear you praising god so a result of this is that when they are praising god people could hear them praising god secondly is that there came a loud earthquake from them praising god thirdly their chains were loosened by them praising god fourth the jailer and his and his entire house were saved by this mere act i am excited when i read this because i'm assured that when you praise god after praying when you praise god results do happen when you praise god despite the situation he is good and his mercies endure forever and so for sure it's not a, a vain act that you're doing it's not a vain task that you're doing when you praise god results do happen and my challenge to you today is that as Paul and Silas did in prison what's your stance when you pray do you pray and live on with your life do you pray and move on i feel a solution towards your prayer after you pray praise god after you pray acknowledge him being all powerful after you pray be in reverence of his power to you in whatever situation that you're praying for because a guarantee with you praying and praising is that miracles will happen it may be midnight in your situation like Paul and Silas even in the time that you're in but for sure if you praise god it cannot always be night something is going to happen something powerful a miracle is going to happen so what stance are you in your prayer i hope that when you pray after you pray you praise and what we are told is that even if you would praise god heavens and earth will praise god cows will moo and praise god what are you doing about it because if if angels are praising god even us mere men should be praising god and what we are told is that praising god is not can be seen it can be heard it can be something that can be heard so i pray and i hope that when you say that you're praising god you are speaking it out that you indeed are praising god if you're praising god with songs then sing out songs of praise to god if you're speaking out song if you're speaking out praise to god speak it out boldly and say that i'm praising god and acknowledge that for sure something powerful is going to happen in your life when you praise god i hope you've been, i hope you have been encouraged by this word and i hope you're challenged that when you pray remember to praise god when you speak it to people oh praise god that you know that this word that you're saying that praise god is a powerful acknowledgement that is able to cause earthquakes it's a powerful acknowledgement that is able to break chains when you say praise god when you actually praise god you're able to lead people to salvation that is my challenge for this week remember when you pray praise god remember when you pray speak out songs of praises to god and for sure a miracle is going to happen in your life i hope you've been blessed by this word have a lovely day or night bye